last into the den, a husband and wife team, Anesha Sue Broyan and Jack Walker, who've brought a four-legged friend along to help with their pitch. So this is Smudgy White Socks. She's nearly 10 years old and she's very much the inspiration behind the business. The duo have turned their love of pets into an all-consuming business idea. There is no date night, there's just cat and dog shows. And our pillow talk is pet food, but you know, that's fine. Is that cat looking at you or is that cat looking at me? Because I'm feeling quite stared out. The entrepreneurs have one of the five investors in particular in their sights. We want to work with a dragon that's passionate about animal welfare as much as we are. Um, I think Deborah's the obvious choice. Getting an investment from the dragons would be a game changer for us. They'd be barking mad not to back us. Hi, dragons. I'm Anasia. This is Jack and this is Smudge. There's actually a fourth member of our team, Boo the Cat, but she's not here for obvious reasons, so we have brought her teddy replica. So we're Scrumbles and we make responsible cat and dog food that promotes great gut health and we'd love you to invest £60,000 for a 10% stake in our company. So like any pet parent, we've had to deal with our fair share of vet trips and we had a really bad patch with our cat Boo and the only thing that was settler was a probiotic paste that we got from the vet. That really revealed to us the importance of gut health and probiotics. But having taken a closer look, we couldn't find a brand that would deliver on gut health was both responsible and affordable, so we decided to create our own. What makes our food great? Um, it's that combination of wholesome natural ingredients plus functional elements like probiotics. So our food's really easy to digest, great for sensitive tummies, and we call it scrumbalicious. We're now going to pass around a selection of products for you guys to look at, and then we welcome any questions. Come on, Smudgy. Gut-friendly food for cats and dogs is the business idea that Croydon couple Anisha and Jack are hoping we'll win over the dragons. Oh, look. Is that good? I've got very good fingernails for dog scratching. <laughs> They're asking for £60,000 in return for a 10% stake in their company. Stay there, honey. Stay. Good girl. See you in a second. Deborah Meaden's love of animals is common knowledge. And it looks like she knows only too well the benefits of a premium pet food. I get really boring at this moment because you've got me on my specialist subject. I had a cat well. with IBD, so I spent my life um, searching the right, you know, the right combination of food. But we kept him alive, and really, I put it down to probiotics and prebiotics. So your your big selling point, because I see it's not showing on your on your dog product, for the cats is probiotic. Yes. So where does it say probiotics? I don't think you can say probiotics. Can I ask them, Tej? I know you're an expert in this field, but I would like to know what they know, not what you know. Just so helping what's out. On... Yeah, no, thank you. I'd like to know what they know. So what can you claim on your packaging? So we can claim that we have added probiotics um, and we can say that that can help with sensitive tummies. Why is it not on the packaging then? So those are the treats and the wet food. They don't have probiotics. It's on our dry food and it's, it says added probiotics And you here. state it on there. So I'm glad I listened to the experts because they, well, actually, they no, you said you can't put probiotics. Well, I, I can say what I want and I can make a comment if I like, thank you. Tej Lalvani and Deborah Meaden clash over the probiotic claims of the product. Tuka Suleiman has a wealth of retail experience behind him, and his ears have pricked up at the pitcher's pet food proposition. I've already invested in a dog business, okay. in silicon dog toys. Um, and, and of course, when I look at anything in dogs, it just wakes me up and says, is there an opportunity? But, I'm a bit worried about your branding. I feel that it's not prominent enough. Okay. It looks faded. Maybe it needs another colour rather than the white to really stick out. I think it's a good point on the yellow. I can't even read the yellow with no, the white. That's what I'm saying. The white actually is not strong enough to read the brand from a distance. What's been really fun with this is actually we've identified the colours that cats and dogs respond to. Cats different. and dogs are not your buyers. Tuka Suleiman wonders if the entrepreneurs are barking up the wrong tree with the colour scheme they've chosen for their products. Tej Lalvani now wants to find out if the gut-friendly pet food has racked up any sales. 
When did you launch and how much have you sold to date? So we closed our first financial year on Friday. Okay. And we delivered £101,000. What was your net profit? Minus 70. Seven zero? Yeah. Okay. And how much money have you invested in the business so far? So personally, we've invested £130,000. Okay, wow. So what are you guys projecting for this new year coming up? So we'll hit 320,000 this year, and we'll probably make a modest loss of about 20,000. So at what point does this business start to make any money? So we're aiming to make a profit in year three. And what's your forecast then for year three? We think we'll hit a million. A million? And then what will your profit be on that? 75,000 pounds. And what's your salary in forecast for this year? We don't take a salary. You just work for free? We work Sadly. for ourselves. We're in, we're we're in it for the long term. We're looking to our first paycheck. Time. Right. It's tough. This is a tough, isn't it? Did it not worry you? I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. You I... enjoy working, not taking a salary? I think when you do something... I don't like... enjoy not having a salary. Yeah, of course. We enjoy working with one another. And what happens to the company if you two fall out and get divorced? That would never happen to us. Peter Jones discovers the pet-loving pair are yet to earn a living from their business. Sarah Davies is now ready to have her say on the natural pet food proposition. I know you're looking for an investor to come on board who's, who's passionate about animal welfare. And it's not that I'm not passionate about that. Yeah. Very much a dog lover, just not a dog or a cat. Honestly, it's a space that I don't understand. So unfortunately, this isn't a one for me. And I'm out. Sarah Davies isn't invested in the product and declined the opportunity to invest in the business. Tuka Suleiman has intimated he's interested in any dog-related enterprise. Is he ready to rumble with scrumbles? At the end of the day, I have to go with my business instincts. Mm -hmm. and, and I am not in a position to wait three, four, five years for my, for my money. So I'm going to say those words, which I don't really want to say, because I think you're very, very credible. But it's not an investment for me. Therefore, I'm out. Thank you. OK, thank you, Tuga. The length of time that you're predicting to get to a point where this can actually make money, mm -hmm. to actually even sustain a, a lifestyle for you as a couple, that really worries me. So I think what you've pitched actually might be a, a, a treat for dogs and cats, but it's not a treat for an investor. So well, I'm going to uh, tell you where I am. OK. It's just not for me. I'm out. Peter Jones has a gut feeling the gut-friendly product isn't going to bring rich returns. Tej Lalvani made his millions in vitamins. Does he think there's a marriage between his health products for humans and their health food for pets? I think you guys are great. I think there's an opportunity here to grow, but I think it's, it's going to require quite a bit of money and time to build a brand. Building a brand is expensive. Uh, look, it's a difficult one, guys. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you where I am. Unfortunately, it's not what you want to hear. It's not for me, I'm out. Tej Lalvani thinks the cash required overrides the market opportunity and becomes the fourth dragon out. Only Deborah Meaden remains. And it seems she has concerns about the protection the pair have on their product. The problem is, for me, is that everything you're doing is very easy to replicate. Thank you. Can I say one more thing, Deborah, before you make a decision? Um, I absolutely agree that most of the things that we're doing can be copied in some way or form. But I think why our customers come to us is because they, they identify with us and our story and they trust us to do right by their cat and dog. All right, I'm going to make you an offer. 
<laughs> oh, you wouldn't let me go out anyway, would you? You were just going to yeah. keep talking until I finally surrendered. So I'm going to offer you £60,000. I want 20% of the business. The entrepreneur's impassioned defence of their product wins over Deborah Meaden and she tables a bid. She takes more time. More time? Absolutely. But in return for the £60,000 the pair are seeking, she's asking for a 20% stake in their business. Twice what the couple are willing to give away. It's more than I wanted to give. Yeah, I really, really like her. Yeah. Let's make a counter offer. Yeah. Can you do it? And it's clear they haven't finished negotiating. So thank you very much for your offer, Deborah. We really respect that you understand the industry. But if we were able to get your money back after a period of three years, would you be happy to reduce your stakeholding to 15%? See, that's counterintuitive. So we worked together for three years to build the value of the business and the brand. And at the end of that three years, when we have built the business and the brand, my stake reduces. Does that sound appealing? If you were up to... Sure. No, for you, sure, yeah, 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 yeah sure. for me. Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to find a compromise between the, the two positions. Honestly, no. Okay. I think on, on, on that basis, Deborah will have to respectfully decline. But thank you very much for your offer. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Good luck, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Good luck, guys. Lovely to meet you. Bye. All the best. Deborah Meaden refuses to change her terms, and Jack does what few entrepreneurs dare do in the den and rejects her offer. The husband and wife team leave without their preferred dragon on board and with one half of the partnership left somewhat confused about the way it played out. I thought you were going to say yes. You should have heard of you wanted. A little bit speechless at the moment. I kind of wanted to say yes. <laughs> Those secret signals that we were supposed to give each other, didn't work. Because so, when yeah. he said, unfortunately, I was like, oh. Blimey. Well, see that coming. Yeah, I don't can... think they have any idea how much work they've got ahead of them. I think they're going to regret that. So I think he kind of jumped in there. Oh, OK, all right, well. 